early Rolling Stones, not the not the hip stuff. And I like the early Rolling Stones, but like the, you know, we're talking like um, Mother's a Little Helper and stuff like that. Under they weren't listening to like uh, Goat's Head Soup or you know, th- no sympathy for the devil or, here. No, 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 that wasn't their thing. Um, so they were buying a lot of the pop records. So I was expo- like, I had Thriller. I had the thrill. I think I don't know anyone who, who's our age. I don't know very many people our age who didn't have Thriller. Right. I mean, having cable, you know, we had cable um, in Puerto Rico. And then we had cable when we lived in, in Bristol, too. But cable was different at the time where it was like HBO and d- movie channels. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have the MT- I didn't. We didn't have MTV, any of that stuff. When we moved to Puerto Rico, we had that like and, and you know, my my dad and my mom both worked, so we kind of, they kind of had disposable income to a certain point because it was the eighties. My parents weren't paying rent; the rent, utilities, and schooling was all being paid for by wow. Jesus. So that led to my brother and I getting things. You know, granted, we did not have the things that the majority of the people that I went to school had. You know, <laughs> um, but like we didn't have go karts and butlers and this, which is good because that's not my thing. But we had like a VCR when they first came out. We had cable. I remember watching MTV um, and watching the Buggles, uh, Radio Kill the Music, uh, the ra- uh, Radio Kill or Video Kill the Radio or how's it go? Video Kill the Radio Star. The Radio Star. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that um, the Talking Heads, a Once in a Lifetime was was big. Um, but all that pop stuff I was exposed to also because in Puerto Rico at the time, all that stuff was still being played on the same stations as the rock stuff because all those, you know, like Prince and Duran Duran, um, you know, the uh, trying to think of having a, a well, brain fart. Well, now, no, no, so, no those... so that's the whole thing. So we had those those channels. So we'll, we'll just to kick it over onto the, the Connecticut piece. So we had the rock stations. Um, but for the longest time, they weren't playing necessarily contemporary rock. Like the, 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 the only stuff that they were playing was maybe U2 and like yep. the police, like those are the only ones that the, the CCCs were playing, right? Yeah. Everything else was mixed format, which for my kids just seems really odd. It's like, no, no, each channel is specific because it's almost like streaming, right? Radio has yep. become very similar to that. It's an all country station. It's an all pop station. And, and it's, you know, very rare that you have the mix. So there's a, a channel up here. I don't know if it's in, in Connecticut. It's called um, Mike, right? So the Mike channels yep. are all formats. And it'll, all of a sudden it will be something that just came out two weeks ago. And then it could be, you know, Tommy James. Um, I think we are much more used to that. And just when I was looking at, you know, the charts, both 79, 82, and, and other charts, probably until the late 90s, is all mixtures of things. Whatever yeah. made it was popular. And I think people were less um, genre specific. A good song is a good song. It doesn't, oh, hey, that's a great tune that's that's on the radio. And I remember clearly there'd be a channel that would play Like a Virgin and then Shout at the Devil. And that was normal. Yeah. That was completely yeah. normal. Um, which is why we all think the way that we do. It's funny that you mentioned shout at the devil because the, the school that I went to in fifth grade was called Robinson. And it was, it was a Catholic private school and its rival school was St. John's, which was right on, on the street next to it. And being in a, it, it was like, a it was and, and, and I'm telling you the truth here. We had a school bookstore and you could buy and you remember these things because, you know, I'm sure they 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 had them here in the States. But you could buy the folders of rock albums mm. and they had and I purchased the shout at the devil. This is a Catholic private school, <laughs> but this is in the 80s. And they had the shout at the devil with, you know, they're going like this and all the makeup. And I had it. And, and, and it was like the cover of the album. And then like it kind of curved up like the, a record. It was like a half a record. And yeah. you open it up and it was, a you know, so I had that. And that was even before I had even listened to any Motley Crue. 
I just thought it was the coolest looking thing. Absolutely. Now, mind you, now, mind you, I had already was already into Twisted Sister at the time. So the makeup, it was the makeup thing. And Kiss, you know, you know that and I'm sure you've I've told you this story before when I was four years old. When we lived in uh, Baltimore, my parents brought me to King's Dominion in Virginia, which is an amusement park. And they had face painters there. So we went and the face painter was like, oh, what do you want to be? You know, you want to be a clown? You want to be a a devil? You want to be? I was like, I want to be Gene Simmons. Awesome. And the guy looked at me. He looked at my parents. My dad just shrugged. And he painted, and I have pictures of it. I have pictures, and that was because of the electric company, and and Kiss being on the electric company. <laughs> that is amazing. You know? but I was in. The, my parents signed me up for the, and I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had all the stuff, but I don't have and that. That got long lost when we moved here from Porter, uh, from when we moved to Bristol from uh, from Baltimore. But I had like the the welcoming packet of that the, when I was four. That was nineteen eighty or no, it's uh, seventy nine, nineteen seventy eight, seventy nine. I had the welcome packet of the Kiss Army and everything. Oh like my that. gosh, that is you know? amazing! Couldn't, couldn't couldn't name a song or anything like that. But Kiss was already so popular and commercialized at that time that they were on the Electric Company, and and I had seen it, and you know, and they became. And they still are one of my favorite bands and guilty pleasures, you know, as someone who enjoys music and whatnot and looks at music. I'm not a musician per se, or, I, you know, like a, like a Don Horton or a Justin or an Eric Irachi, some of the friends, people we know, but I have a musical ear yeah, and I listen to music differently than say my wife and my brother. And, you know, we listen to music a lot alike, you know, um, kiss is, pretty much not technically crazy but it's just good clean fun and a guilty pleasure you know and ace freely man like like justin was saying best solo ace record freely solo album it was just that's it right there man. it's so good he's a he he gets crapped on as a guitarist depending on who you compare him to yeah but you know what man he he can hold his own you know, but I'm he was he was coming out of the own. punk scene too. He was more of yeah. a sloppy punk rocker that people forget their contemporaries are, are. You know, they were influenced by the New York Dolls. Like they were all coming up in that same scene, and he's just a sloppy three chord. I I, I know he's never played the same solo twice, ever. Yeah. Like just obviously yeah. not. But there's something people forget that song structure matters, and if yeah. you can create a great song with a great hook. You don't need to be Ingvay Malmsteen. You don't need to be so technically proficient. Although Gene Simmons is a really, really good bass player. And Paul Stanley is a killer rhythm guitarist who can occasionally solo when he feels like it. Not to mention everybody freaking sings in the band, no matter which iteration of the band, they've always had these, these dual or triple threats. However, I just want to say, I don't know what year, but do you remember Color Forms? Yes. Yes. And you would have like a little <laughs> background and you had on yeah. the, each side the stickers. I had yeah, Kiss Color stickers. Forms. Kiss really? Color and Forms. The rub on them. Yep. yep. And they had the, you know, the platform shoes and Gene had like the wings and it was the uh, um, uh, Kiss in the Phantom of the Park Color Forms. Yeah. So I would just sit there for hours, and all you did was you reposition these stupid things and create your own little stories in your head. But, you know, think about that. This was specifically marketed for children. And and we're talking younger children, and they already had their product line in place. And you know that oh, Gene yeah. Simmons' wheels were turning. He goes, we got to hook them young, Paul. And that's exactly Absolutely. what they did. I mean, there's yep. nothing better than than having um, a gimmick like that. But what's interesting, I've only seen them in concert once, Carlos. And that was Same without with makeup. That was without oh, makeup. No, no. That and was... that was Hot in the Shade yep. tour. That was Hot in the Shade. Yep. Um, I think Warrant opened for them. Um, so it was Warrant and Kiss, wow. Hot in the Shade. And 
I don't know. It, it was even then such a killer show, you know? Paul was so animated and all over the stage. And I personally liked the Crazy Nights era and the Hot in the Shade oh, era. That's... Like, I, I love oh, yeah. 80s Kiss. And I know some yep. people don't. So I, I, I mentioned this guy a lot, but um, uh, one of my influences from a podcasting perspective is Chris Jericho. And Chris Jericho has an 80s Kiss cover band that started because of COVID. They're called Quarantine with a K. Nice. <laughs> um, and they only do 80s Kiss. And PJ Farley from Trickster is in that band as well. That's how they started oh, nice. to become friends. Nice. Very nice. A bald, uh, a bald PJ Farley. A bald PJ yeah. Farley. Yeah, he doesn't have that hair anymore. I no, but he's that. still in ridiculously, you know, skinny shape. Um, okay, so you you move from Puerto Rico to Meriden in eighty five. You said, yeah, eighty five. So eighty five, and immediately come into um, that was Washington, right? Yep, I we live. You remember the old Yale Inn? Yeah, yeah. Yep. We lived there for the first two months of uh, six, my, when I was in sixth grade because we still, you know, my, my parents were still looking for a place. Um, and so, you know, we ended up moving to Meeting House in one of the townhouses. They purchased the townhouse. But for the first two years, uh, two months, I lived at uh, the Yale Inn and I would walk, like the first people I met the first day of school, I had to walk past Hancock's Pharmacy <laughs> and past Danby's, past Hancock's, all the way down to like where John Gianfrido, uh lives, or like the street where John Gianfrido's parents live. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was where the bus stop was. So the first people I met uh, when uh, in Meriden were John Gianfrido, Greg Morse, Steve Morse, and... <laughs> Yeah, so so those are because we're all on the same same bus stop. Steve was, yeah, Steve was no, Steve was in, yeah, he was in eighth grade. He's two years. He graduated uh, two years before mm. us. So yeah, he he was uh, there, and yeah, so those were the first people I met, and yeah, so yeah, in, in uh, sixth grade. So again, that was that was tough, and. Yeah, I mean, uh, middle school was where I met, you know, some of the people that we've remained friends with all these years. Justin Piccarillo was in my homeroom. Don Horton was in my homeroom. Uh, this guy, Mike Valentine. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He passed away when we were in high school. Yeah. Um, he, he was in my homeroom. Um, yeah, so... And, and, and with, you know, with Justin, um, the two things we had in common were, were well, we had a couple of things were, were baseball because we both like baseball mm -hmm. we played Little League. We ended up playing Little League uh, against each other, um, music and like comic books and baseball cards, that type of stuff. You know, were you Jack Barry um, or Ed Walsh? Ed Walsh. You played Jack Barry, right? I did. Or, yeah. Or, yep. Yep. So. So yeah, so we that is such a towny uh, thing, guys. Anyone who's listening, it's a, such a Meriden thing to to even have that, that question. And that's all. <laughs> that's all gone. They used to be Ed Walsh, Jack Berry, and Connie Mack. Connie Mack, South Meriden. Yep. And then you had South Meriden. Now you have Ed Walsh, which is called Meriden Little League because they Connie Mack was gone and they got rid of Jack Berry two years ago. Wow. And and then so you just have the the Ed Walsh area and then. Uh, South Meriden. Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> now I'm trying to remember if it was sixth grade or seventh grade. So the only time I really talked to you in middle school was at lunch. Yes. Um, oh, and there was another kid. Oh my gosh. He was a huge Kiss fan. Um, Jonathan. Oh my gosh. Um, oh God. John it's Tortorella? No. John Tortorella. No, no. Oh man. It'll, it'll come to me at like some random hour, but he was just the biggest kiss fan ever to the point where he would sneak listening to it. Like, like he needed a fix of kiss in the middle of the day. And he had the little, you know, tape recorder, the little, you know, Walkman or whatever. And he would just put it up to his ear and get some crazy nights into his ear. Um, nice. But that's when we first, first met. 
So you listen to the, you know, the, 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 